Good morning, my name is Jacob Holger, I'm an artist sculptor, and today we're going to make another uh, mushroom troll. Um, I did a video of doing the same thing yesterday, only this one's going to be a little bit more friendly looking. Um, so I'm just uh, kneading the clay, uh, conditioning it uh, to get it ready to sculpt, and that gets everything mixed up inside the clay. I'm going to squeeze it a little bit just to kind of create a shape like this and then uh, and then roll it to and fro a little bit. Kind of creating uh, a shape like that. I'm going to flatten it out a little bit on the table. This will be the mushroom stalk and also the head of the troll. Up here will go the uh, mushroom cap. Once we get to that point. Next I'm going to take my thumbs like this and press in to create the outline for the eyes. And then I'm going to take a, uh, whenever I take clay off the block, I'm going to just condition it a little bit in my hands, knead it a little bit. I'm going to roll kind of a long teardrop shape like that, and that will be for the nose. Put that on there like that. And then uh, blend it in on the sides and on the, you know, each end. The nice thing about faces, you know, sculpting faces, is it, uh, it's really good practice and, and you can learn how to do it fairly easily by, by actually doing it. And that's kind of the idea behind the Mushroom Trolls that I'm going to be doing is to uh, kind of a, a motivator to get people to make, uh, to work out making faces. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a sculpting tool and uh, just create a line here for to uh, define the mouth. And then I'm going to take a noodle of clay and I'm going to roll it a little bit more on the ends. So it looks like that. I'm going to follow the line of the mouth, mouth line that I just added. And I'm going to put it on there and then I'm going to blend it in at the top. I'm going to use a tool if you need to. I want to uh, try to achieve a smile. So I'm just working on that a little bit there. The other, the other uh, troll that I made yesterday was really, really kind of grimacing and <laughs> I'm not so certain people were very uh, happy with that particular one, but, you know, the idea here really is just to make faces and, you know, practice making faces. So I'm rolling another noodle about like the one I just did, but smaller. Let's apply that there.
once you do this a few times, it becomes, you know, more, uh, easy, a lot, lot easier to do. Anything that you practice uh, will be like that for you. The more you practice, the more uh, luck you are going to be at uh, being successful with making things. Just going to kind of carve this back a little bit here. You see it has really kind of a pleasant, kind of a pleasant look on his face. Now what I'm going to do is, uh, now you, oh, I just want to tell you, you know, I roll, I do this a lot, so I'm, I'm constantly rolling between my fingers, but you can also roll between the palms of your hands like this to create shapes if that's easier for you. And also, whenever you're making a shape, if you need two of them, it's best to make uh, two at, before you start applying them to your sculpture so that they're the same size. And So see how I just did that and this one's too big? So I'll pull some off. Roll it again. It's still a little bit too big, so I'll take a little bit more off. And that's, that's much better there. See, they're about the same size now. These are for the, uh, kind of to define the, uh, the face a little bit more. So I'll put those, it's kind of like the cheeks and the wrinkles in the, in the face. So I'm putting those along the side there. And then you can, uh, you know, press them into place. And, uh, and and blend them in at the back on the uh, this side of the face. Blend them in. And you know what I usually tell people is um, that you know when you're first starting out, your fingers are not going to work like my mine work. And the reason why is I practice all the time, and and I sculpt almost every single day of my life, and so. Of course, my hands are going to work a lot better in, in, than yours, more than likely. So, the, the key is to practice, but don't get frustrated with yourself, because um, it, just, uh, it just makes you feel bad. You don't need to be feeling bad. I'm going to um, add a little bit of a chin here, a ball of clay. And if you can't, if you can't get your fingers in close, or to work those little tight areas, you can use a tool. But I usually try to recommend that you use your fingers as much as you possibly can, because um, they they're just they're just fantastic tools. Maybe not for you right now, but they will become that way if you practice. And they're just, they're just really, really fantastic tools. So I'm just pressing it on the, on the board, on the board now to, on the table to, uh, make sure it's flat on the bottom and it's just, uh, working out. Now I'm going to take, uh, this, uh, sculpting tool. You also can use, uh, you could use uh, a round object, uh, shape like that. This is an exacto knife. This is a, a paintbrush, a paintbrush end came off, but you could also use either end of these, this end or the other end. I'm going to use this tool here, and I'm going to create the eye sockets by pressing into the clay, like that. 
I'm going to make each eye socket for, for both eyes to be the same depth and size. It just makes things easier. So it looks like that. And, uh, and now I'm going to roll um, a little ball and just set it in the eye to see if it fits like that. Then I'm going to pull it out and set it on the table and then make another one just like it. Oh, I looked out. No, it's a little bit big. Let me take some off. And pull it again. Set it beside it. Yes, that looks good. Okay, now I'll set that in the eye socket. Now, especially when you're starting out, when you're putting pupils in the eyes, the part of the eye that looks like it has color or shadow, um, it's really best if you point the eye, uh, the eye sock, uh, eye, eye pupil, and they have it looking in a direction, like, to the left or right. I usually go that way, but I'm going to go this way today. So what I mean by that is I'm going to add the pupil to the eye looking to the right. And the same with this one. It's just easy to, it's a lot easier to get the pupils to look like they're lined up and looking in the same direction. And it also adds a little bit of character and personality to the piece. Next I'm going to take roll a, a noodle that's kind of sharp on both ends. And this is going to be the, uh, the eyelid. I'm going to do that for the other side as well. And then I'll take uh, another sculpting tool here and uh, sculpt in the eyelid. Just uh, kind of blending in at the top. And uh, I'll do that on both sides. Now, the, the eyelids can also add to, um, to the, uh, the look of it and the expression of the face. So, if he's looking kind of funny and you don't like the way he looks, it might have, be, have something to do with the eyelids. I'm going to see if I can show you a demonstration of why, why I say that. If I take... Right now, it's a fairly smooth transition right there. But I'm going to take my knife. And add that line there on both sides. He now looks more kind of worried. You see what I mean? So, um, he, he almost doesn't look as, even as happy as he did a few minutes ago. But if you take that, if you take that line out, make it look as smooth as possible,
See how his expression changes and becomes lighter, happier, sweeter? Isn't that something? So just pay attention to that sort of thing. It will, it will make a huge difference in the faces that you make. Now you know that. Few people will ever show you that. I have no idea why. Let's just tell everyone as much as we can. That's what I say. <laughs> okay. So I just want to smooth this out a little bit more here. Because I want this guy to look really lighthearted right now. I don't want him to look uh, upset or anything like that. Worried, concerned. Another thing about sculpting a face is if you if you if you leave in a lot of sculpting marks, which I often do and like to do, but in this lesson I want to just tell you, if you do that, um, you also make the face look older, and as a result of that, more worried. If you take a if you take a paintbrush. And with water, water's fine. You can use water, you can use alcohol. It doesn't really matter. I don't think it does. You can brush out all those uh, imperfections. And the face will become even more lighthearted and relaxed. You're taking out the hardness and, the, and that sort of thing. If you lift, uh, lift the eyelids a little bit also, that will uh, give it more of a lighthearted look. Now let me just show you something else. If you, uh, I talked about this in the last video, just touched on it. I want to talk about it a little bit more. If you lift the eyelid a lot and you leave the whites of the eyes showing above the pupil, You'll make him look either frightened or excited. But if you if you if you were lifting the eyelid, and you then took your sculpting tool, whatever it may be, a paintbrush in this case, and just sculpted that, uh, basically po poked a hole in there to the pupil, and uh, got it up above. Uh, the eyelid, so the eyelid is covering that topmost part of the pupil, then he should look more relaxed and less afraid. Like I just did there. So I'm going to lift this eyelid a little bit. That one's, that one's already to where it needs to be. But I'm just going to go back and just make sure. So just playing with the um, the eyelids can make a world of difference in the expression that you've got. And the best thing to do is just practice and play with it. So he looks he looks pretty pretty relaxed there. Now I'm going to put on some eyebrows, and I'm going to talk more about expression. I'm going to try to just achieve a very lighthearted look on this guy's face. I've been working on uh, <clears throat> an idea of uh, dedicating the um, sculptures, uh, sculpture classes I do to certain artists, and uh, or up-and-coming artists, people that watch my videos, and, you know, I can see this promise, um, you know, just mostly because they're practicing. Um, and they're sharing also. I wouldn't know unless they shared it with me, but, I mean, there's a whole lot of people out there, I would imagine, that are very promising artists and uh, up-and-coming, but they don't share with me, so I wouldn't know. But this, uh, this woman is Stephania. And uh, she's done a, a few pieces, and once in a while I make videos that show what these students are doing with my tutorials. 
So watch for them because um, Stephanie has been on uh, two videos so far. And I mentioned uh, Andrea uh, in yesterday's video. Um, she's about to be in another video. They're just little showcase videos to, to show um, what people are doing with the with the um, with the uh, tutorials that I do. Um, so I'm going to take this. This is going to be the eyebrow, and I'm going to just set it back a little bit here this way. And the other, this end, I'm going to have just pointing up. I still want to achieve a, a very light-hearted look. So let me put another one on there so I can demonstrate this for you. So I roll it to the shape I want. Lay it on. And see, that's fairly, you know, you can see it's a very light-hearted look. I can change that, however. Slightly. I mean, it's hard to change it without changing the eyelids, but you can see this uh, by doing this, it makes them look more, um, maybe even a little bit more serious or frightening looking. Again, I could change that more by messing with the eyelids, but I don't really want to at this point because I'm trying to um, keep this look going that I've got. So just the positioning of the eye, uh, eyelids. And also, when you're doing eyelids, uh, or positioning of the eyebrows, um, when you're doing that, uh, putting them on, don't feel so like it's so necessary to get them in the same place uh, or same position because having them slightly different is more natural uh, also. Now, uh, you can uh, blend this in to the uh, top of the head to kind of uh, secure it there. And you can add uh, texture to uh, define the hairs of the eyebrows. So he's, he's got the look basically that I was trying to achieve, which is a very lighthearted, relaxed, kind of a nice smile, gentle soul, just watching the world go by as he's being a mushroom troll, which is about to become more evident when I add a top to his uh, mushroom top or mushroom cap to the top of his head. Now, you can, of course, shorten the, uh, the stock if you want, but I'm going to leave it there. So, I'm going to leave it like it is there. And I'm going to need to clay a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little bit of wire, because generally when I join to pieces of clay like that, I like to, uh, This is, uh, galvanized steel wire, 18 gauge, and, uh, galvanized wire is pretty strong. If you, uh, if you bend it in half, like this, cross it over like this. Grab onto it here and twist it. It'll make it even stronger. This end here is a little bit of a loop. You can leave it like that if you want, or you can squeeze it and, and squish it down like that. That just makes it stronger. 
when you're putting this down, you want to make sure you're going straight down the center of the uh, stock. Because you don't want it coming out into your face or, or somewhere that you don't want it to be. We'll set that aside for a minute and make the mushroom cap. You can just uh, you can just flatten it like this if you want. This is how I usually do it. It's just the way I've been doing it for many years. I made a lot of mushrooms over over the course of my lifetime. Let me tell you what. I have made many, many, many. So I'm just squeezing it and turning it. It's just like almost habit, you know, if you do something enough, you kind of get used to doing it a certain way. I'm not saying it's the best way, but it's the way I do it. I love mushrooms. I go out to the forest and just sit there and watch them grow almost. I'm not kidding you. I just, I just love them. I like photographing them. The one thing I haven't ever done is eaten them. I, I don't think I would eat, eat them. I don't know enough about them. It can be kind of dangerous to eat. Okay, so it kind of looks like that. And you can look at pictures of uh, mushrooms on uh, on Google. You can just uh, you can Google mushroom sculptures or mushroom um, just mushrooms in general and. Uh, so I'm just putting it at the center, but before uh, before I press it down, I'm going to score the top of the mushroom stock like this. And I'm going to score the bottom of the um, mushroom uh, cap. So that when I join the two, there, there's a nice strong bond. And then I just twist it on there to make it nice and nice strong bond there. Then I'll tilt it slightly and maybe turn one end up like that. Yeah. So you can see he turned out he's turning out pretty good. I think I'm gonna leave him about there. And I'm going to put a finish on him. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put a finish on him. And, um, I'm going to, what I'm going to do is, uh, this is pearl wax pigments. And this is silver. And I'm going to, uh, I want to show you this real quick. So when you go into this, go into, it's a powder. And you go into the powder, you just want to touch it. Set this down here. You just want to touch it into the powder. You don't want to submerge it into it. You don't want to immerse it into it. You just want to touch it into it. Get some on your brush and then put it in the cap and work from the cap. Because this stuff can be kind of dusty and I don't think you really want it in the air or around you. So you just want to be careful. So, um,. I get on the brush and then I dab it on the table to get the excess off. And then I'll put it on the, uh, see it's dusty, it's getting in the air right there. So, um, I'm putting it on the, uh, on the eyebrows. Like that. I'm, I'm looking for kind of a subdued look. I'm not looking to make it really, uh, bright. I have a rag in my uh, lap and I'm wiping it off now. This is uh, antique bronze here. Just straight antique bronze. Sometimes I mix it with gold, but this is straight. And you can apply it with a finger or you can use a brush. I, I like both. Sometimes I do... Uh, um, Sometimes I do it with a finger and sometimes I do it with uh, with a brush. It just depends on how I feel. Oh, 
I'm looking mostly to just highlight it. Um, I don't really want to cover the whole thing. So sometimes I'll just dab it on like that. And I try to get the bottom so that the uh, finish has continuity throughout. If you put it on with a finger, it looks different. You notice I'm, I'm just cradling the sculpture in my hand. I'm not, I'm not gripping it with my fingers. Sometimes if you grip it, you'll distort it. Just kind of highlighting the high points there. Do underneath the uh, bottom of the cap, it's a little bit down there too. And then I'm going to, uh, I want to use purple. I like purple. I know purple's not as popular as it was before, but I'm going to dip my finger right down in there. Just swirl my finger, swirl it like I did the bronze, and apply it. This is actually Reflex Violet. Now I'm going to put um, I'm going to put a tool and supply list in the video description, which is below or above the video, depending on where you're watching it. And then I'm going to uh, also put baking instructions for uh, Sculpey 3 polymer clay. That's the clay that we're using today. And uh, and then I'm going to also put um, a smoothing video uh, for smoothing polymer clay uh, in uh, in the video description. Now just to just to add some a little bit of fun and texture to the finish, I'm going to add a little bit of purple by just touching it. It just adds a little dimension to the uh, to the finish. And then I'll do uh, I'll take a little bit of bronze and there's the purple there. And I'm just going to um, touch that with the bronze. It gives you a really, really nice uh, deep appearance. And there we go. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe to my channel. I do a number of videos, many, many videos along these lines. If you'd like to see a video, if you're curious about how to do something and you'd like to know something about it, ask me. Put it in the comment section or any kind of comment or question and I'll usually be able to respond to you. I try to respond to everyone. I can't promise, but I try. And, um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, if you could rate the video, let me know what you think of it. And uh, that just helps me and also helps YouTube. Uh, so it's really kind of important. And I do appreciate you watching so much. I really do appreciate you guys so much. And uh, I thank you for your support. And have a great day. Thank you. Bye.